Did you ever wonder what would happen if Luffy awakened his Gear 5 abilities at the start of the show? Would he be able to defeat the people he lost to? And what would his crew look like? Would there be any new members? And most importantly, would he finally be able to save his brother? Well, for this to work, we'll say that Luffy awakened his Nika form while still a kid training with Ace and Guard. From here on, he'd start training with his new abilities and would eventually set sail once he turned 17. Now, to make this video more interesting, we can go ahead and skip the next three story arcs. Shell's Town, Orange Town, and Syrup Village as Luffy's opponents in these arcs were already pretty weak and him being Nika would change absolutely nothing. However, it's on Beta T where our crew's journey gets interesting as this is where they meet with Mihawk who shows them just how weak they are compared to the big time pirates. Now that Luffy if he already has Gear 5 unlocked, would he be able to actually defeat Mihawk this early on? First of all, Luffy's big fight on Beta T was against Don Krieg, and even though Luffy managed to beat him just as a regular rubber man, he did get badly injured and lose a lot of blood. However, now that Luffy has his Nika abilities, he'd be able to finish his fight with Don Krieg before Mihawk even arrives because it would literally take one punch. But we all knew that, so let's now cover something much more interesting. Luffy versus Mihawk. How would that go? Well, upon Zoro's loss, Luffy would become enraged and transform into Nika to attack Mihawk. At this point, Mihawk would try to explain that he doesn't intend to hurt Luffy or his crew, but Luffy being Luffy would not listen to a word he has to say and would proceed to attack him. Considering Luffy doesn't have hockey developed at this point, Mihawk would easily block his attack, but would be shocked at how strong he is. In order to stop him, Mihawk would have to slice Luffy too, gravely wounding him and giving him a scar similar to Zoro's. Now you may be thinking that Luffy having Gear 5 unlock changed nothing in this arc as they lost to Mihawk anyway. But that's wrong. You see, in the original story, by the time Luffy was done with Don Creek, Nami was already back on Arlong Park. But if she witnessed the power of Gear 5 Luffy, do you really think she'd still betray him? I don't think so. It's more likely that she'd just straight up ask him to free her village from Arlong, as she's confident that he can do it. I doubt Luffy would have a problem with making a quick detour to free the citizens of Kokoyasi Village. He would swoop in there alone, easily defeating Arlong and all the other fishmen with his giant fists. But this now creates a problem. While it's nice of Luffy to finish the job himself, the other crewmates, namely Usopp, Zoro, and Sanji wouldn't be able to get stronger since they'd never have a strong opponent to fight against. Another interesting thing is that since the Straw Hats would be done fighting so soon, they wouldn't cross paths with Marine Captain Nezumi, which means Luffy wouldn't get his first bounty yet. Although Logetown is really a short arc, now that Luffy has Gear 5, there'd be a couple of major differences. Firstly, Luffy being reckless would still get captured by Buggy, but considering he now has Gear 5 abilities, he could just make himself thinner and escape. No need for that lucky thunder strike from Dragon to free him. Another major difference is that since Luffy doesn't have a bounty yet, Smoker wouldn't attempt to catch him as he'd have no reason to. This also means Dragon wouldn't have to get involved and would just watch Luffy from a distance. And now the crew finally enters the Grand Line. I'll skip Whiskey Peak and Little Garden as those islands were never really a problem for the Straw Hats and the opponents there are not really worth mentioning. The only cool thing that would happen is that Gear 5 Luffy would briefly fight against Zoro on Whiskey Peak, which would be really cool to see. Click the subscribe button right now and I'll show you exactly exactly what that would look like. Three, two, one. Okay, you asked for it. On their way to Alabasta, the crew picks up Chopper and beats up Wapple. Not many changes there either. However, Luffy now has to face his toughest opponent so far, the Warlord of the Sea, Crocodile. And let me tell you, this battle doesn't really go as planned. As in the original, the crew would meet up with Ace and eventually get trapped in the Sea Stone Cage. After escaping, however, the Gear 5 Luffy and Crocodile will finally clash. And, well, despite his Gear 5, Luffy would get absolutely destroyed. You see, no matter how strong Luffy's awakened form is, he still hasn't learned hockey at this point, which means all of his attacks against Crocodile are pointless. So even in this scenario, Luffy still loses and gets saved by Robin. However, when he returns for a rematch, now knowing Crocodile's weakness to water, the battle battle immediately becomes unfair. I mean, just imagine seeing a giant Gear 5 Luffy covered with water. Crocodile would be terrified. He'd desperately be trying to defend against Luffy's powerful wet attacks, but would eventually get overwhelmed and defeated. Now, since Luffy defeated Crocodile early in this scenario, it means that he didn't save Robin in the ruins later on, which now creates a problem. Would Robin now even join the Straw Hats? Although we can't know for sure, I'm guessing she'd still join solely because she has nowhere else to go, but she wouldn't really consider them friends yet. Now, many people don't like the Sky arc because it feels like a filler and is also pretty long. And while this Gear 5 Luffy can't change how you feel about this arc, he can certainly shorten it by a lot. The whole reason why this arc was so long is because everyone was split up and Luffy got eaten by a snake. Yeah, not one of his brightest moments. 
Anyway, the reason he was eaten was that the snake surprised attacked him while he was fighting Wiper. But that fight would have been long over if Luffy had Gear 5 at his disposal, which means he'd be ready to defend against the snake. This means he'd be there to face Anel with the rest of his crew more than 20 chapters earlier. After figuring out that Anel can't hit him, it would only take Luffy a few punches to launch Anel far off the island, freeing everyone from his oppression. Now, one problem with this is that Anel may just look for a new island on the Sea to Rule, but I guess we can let the Navy worry about that. And while Skybia went much better than expected for the Straw Hats, their confidence will quickly be completely destroyed. You see, after returning to the Blue Sea, the crew goes to Long Ring Long Land and eventually encounters the Marine Admiral Alkiji. Sensing that Alkiji is incredibly strong, Luffy sends everyone back to prepare the ship while he stalls now, it. Now, since Alkiji is another Logia user, Luffy obviously can't punch him, but that doesn't mean he'll be immediately defeated. Since Gear 5 allows Luffy to do pretty much anything as long as he can imagine it, I can easily see him turning Alkiji's ice into rubber and dodging his attacks that way. Still, considering he can't really hit Aokiji, he would eventually get exhausted and completely frozen. Just like in the original story, Aokiji would spare his life since Luffy saved Alabasta from Crocodile, but would put out a word to the Marines that this rookie pirate is way more dangerous than he looks. This is why Luffy's bounty at this point will be much higher than in the original, probably around 500 million berries. And although this arc played out similarly to the original, the crew now arrives at Water 7, and here's where absolutely everything changes, and some of it's absolutely heartbreaking. As in the original, as as soon as they arrive, Robin would let the CP9 agents take her away since she thinks the Straw Hats stand no chance against them. Now, fast forward to when the crew infiltrates Iceberg's mansion and meets face to face with Luchi and the other agents. In the canon version, this fight didn't really go well for the Straw Hats and they were absolutely humiliated. However, considering none of the CP9 agents have Logia abilities and considering that Luffy has awakened one of the strongest devil fruits in the series, he would wipe the floor with them. I mean, it only took Gear 3 to defeat Luchi in the original, so just imagine how would the fight look if he had Gear 5 at this point. Since all the agents are now defeated, Luffy and the others rescue Robin from the train before it even departs for Ennis Lobby, which means that the entire story arc would get skipped. But not everything is as great as it seems. You see, since the crew never went to Ennis Lobby, that also means they never bonded with Frankie, so he'd have no real reason to join the crew and make them a ship. Considering they saved Iceberg earlier, he'd probably give them a really good ship with other shipwrights made, but it just wouldn't be Thousand Sunny. Wow, I can't believe that Luffy being this strong would actually lead to Frankie not joining the crew. But regardless, the adventure must keep going. And the next destination is Thriller Bark, where Luffy's powers will actually make everything much, much harder. In the canon version, after meeting Brooke and arriving on the island, Sanji and Zoro are immediately caught off guard and kidnapped to have their shadows extracted. Now, Luffy's situation is a bit different because he was perfectly on guard, fighting in a room full of relatively weak zombies, yet he still got captured somehow off screen. I'll just assume that they gave him some meat and kindly asked him to step into a trap, which is a strategy that would also work against Gear 5 Luffy. But now that Luffy's shadow is extracted, there's a huge problem. You see, the body that gets Luffy's shadow will also get all of his abilities, meaning that Ors would most likely be able to use some of Nika's abilities. Seeing as the Straw Hats really struggle to deal with just regular Ors, they'd be absolutely overwhelmed this time while waiting for Luffy to come back and help them. But although Luffy's new abilities created a big problem here, they'd also lead to something so cool. So after chasing Moria's clone, Luffy and ends up in the forest where he meets the Rolling Pirates, who all lost their shadows to Moria and decided to feed Luffy all the shadows they'd been collecting over the years. And let me tell you, Gear 5 Shadow Luffy would be one of the most insane transformations ever. I'd say it's even close to the Emperor level, so you bet Moria and Ors couldn't do much against this monster. And just when everyone thinks the battle is over, another warlord, Kuma, steps in with his order to eliminate Luffy. At this point, the Straw Hats would all be badly injured from fighting Nika Ors, but Luffy would be mostly fine so he could fight Kuma one on one. Since Kuma is a revolutionary, even if he could defeat Luffy, it's not like he actually planned to kill or capture him in the first place, so he just leaves Thriller Bark after testing Luffy's strength. What this unfortunately means, we'll never get Zoro's badass nothing happened moment. All right, but now we come to the crew's biggest challenge so far, the Salvati Archipelago, where all their dreams were crushed last time. So will the power of the sun god be enough for them to survive Kizaru's and Kuma's attacks and to get to Fishman Island? Well, one small thing to note is that, as we already discussed, Luffy's bounty would be around 500 million berries, which would make him the supernova with the highest bounty. Sorry, kid. Anyway, it's safe to assume that he'd still punch a world nova and get an admiral sent after him. Now, as we already mentioned several times in the video, Luffy once again can't do anything about Kizaru since he's a Logia, but he will not have this problem for much longer. Anyway, Rayleigh would come to the Straw Hat's aid and keep the admiral busy while they try to manage against Kuma. Since Luffy is now much stronger than in the original, he would charge full speed at Kuma in order to defeat him, but considering Kuma's insane speed, he would just avoid Luffy and focus on deleting his crewmates one by one. 
By the time Kuma was done teleporting everyone, Luffy would lose all fighting spirit and surrender, getting teleported as well. Although at this moment Luffy will realize how helpless he and his crew truly are against some of the strongest characters in the show, it's only going to get harder from this point on. And if he wants to save his brother this time around, Luffy will have to do everything right. But can he manage to pull it off? But before that, he arrives on Amazon Lily, where he makes friends with Boa who decides to help him break into Impel Down. And do you know what the best part is? There are no Logias in Impel Down, meaning that Luffy will be able to show off his true strength. His journey through levels 1, 2, and 3 would be a piece of cake, since numerous beasts and even the mighty Sphinx would be no match for him. Level 4 is where he met and lost to Magellan, but that wouldn't be the case this time. An important thing to remember here is that although Magellan looks like a Logia, he is in fact not, and he can only cover himself with poison, not turn into it. Considering Luffy's ridiculous abilities, I bet he could come up with a way to turn Magellan's poison into rubber and dodge his attacks that way. And if he manages to do that, there's nothing stopping him from beating the warden to a pulp and continuing to the lower levels. Sadly for Luffy, after hearing of his break-in, the marines would send someone to move Ace to Marine Fort ahead of schedule, meaning that by the time Luffy reaches Ace's cell, Ace would already be gone. Still, he would meet Jinbei and assemble his little prison escape group, which he would take to Marine Fort to save his brother. One change here is that since Luffy didn't lose to Magellan, he never went to Nukama Land and met Ivankov, meaning he and his men wouldn't be present with the rest of the prison escape group. And although that part is pretty unfortunate, it's not that big of a problem for Luffy since as long as he has his imagination, everything is possible, even saving Ace. Maybe. Let's see. Upon arriving, Luffy would still have to run through countless marines, but with the help from Boa and the Whitebeard Pirates, he'd eventually make it under the execution stand. Since Ivankov is not present, there's no one to revive Luffy if he gets beaten, so he really only has one chance to get up there. Also, without Inazuma to make the path for him, Luffy would have to improvise. Luckily, he has the most ridiculous power in the entire story, so there's many ways he could get up there. For example, he could turn the floor into rubber and use it as a trampoline, or just simply run up there on air like a Looney Tunes character. Like in the original, he would punch Garp out of the way and free Ace. Now, the only reason Ace died in the main story is because Luffy was injured and could barely move, so he sacrificed his life in order to protect him. However, this time around, Luffy wouldn't suffer any major injuries, so there'd be no need for Ace to die. Also, as I said already, Luffy's Gear 5 allows him to do pretty much anything, so escaping from Marineford should be much easier as well. He can pretty much just launch Ace and himself to safety using his rubber powers or transform into a giant and escape that way. Of course, I believe Whitebeard would still die fighting, but since Ace now survived, his last words may also be different. This time, he may choose to yell out to Ace to escape and live his life to the fullest instead of yelling about One Piece. After the war, Ace and Luffy make their way back to Salbity, and there, they're stopped by Rayleigh, who suggests they train with him because Luffy and his crew are nowhere strong enough to enter the New World. Seeing as the Whitebeard Pirates got destroyed, Ace would have to find a new crew, and I believe he'd very much like to be a part of his younger brother's crew, which would make Ace the new Straw Hat. The two of them would train on Rusakaina with Rayleigh for the next two years and meet up with everyone else to continue their journey. Okay, so, you're probably wondering, now that Luffy can finally use hockey, how easy is everything gonna get? Will the crew be able to defeat some of the Emperors earlier in the show? Would anyone even be able to stop this monstrous crew? Well, firstly, the Fishman Island arc was never really the problem for the Straw Hats, so now that Luffy has Gear 5 plus hockey, everything will be much easier, and the crew will absolutely destroy both Hody Jones and Vander Decken. After that, Punk Hazard will also go pretty smoothly, since Caesar Clown was never a serious opponent to begin with. But let's now cover the three most important arcs. Dress Rose Whole Cake, and Wano, where Luffy's new abilities will completely disrupt the story and may even lead to the death of some crewmates. On Dressrosa, two things would be completely different. First, since Ace is now alive, there'd be no competition for the Meta Meta no Mi, meaning Luffy wouldn't meet Bartolomeo, Cavendish, and the others, which would ultimately lead to the Grand Fleet never being created. Also, Ace being alive means that Sabo wouldn't regain his memories and wouldn't reunite with his brothers on this island. So it's most likely Ace who would do Sabo's job and keep Admiral Fujitora busy while everything is going down. But he wouldn't have to do that for long because Luffy would be finished with Doflamingo before the Warlord could even activate his birdcage. After this, there wouldn't be any need to rest on Dressrosa for three days as the crew is not that badly injured, so they'd just continue their journey the next day. Zul would also remain relatively the same, as I don't see Luffy's strength changing anything significant here, so the crew would head to Whole Cake Island in order to rescue Sanji. And this is where Luffy's power will be put to a real test, as he'll have to battle against the Emperor of the Sea for the first time. Will he actually manage to pull off something like this? The big fight of this arc is Luffy versus Cracker, and instead of eating Cracker's biscuits like in the original story, Luffy could just turn them all into rubber and look for an opening to slam Cracker and defeat him in one swift blow. 
Although he now wouldn't be injured at all after this battle, it wouldn't really matter as he'd still take a beating from Sanji and decide to stay there until he gets back. This means that he'd be both injured and hungry by the time Big Mom's army gets there. So unfortunately, even in this scenario, he would probably lose to them. The alliance with the fire tank pirates and the assassination attempt on Big Mom would go about the same with Luffy ending up in the mirror world facing off against Katakuri. With his advanced observation hockey, Katakuri can dodge any attack, that is, if he can react in time. And this would prove to be quite difficult since Gear 5 is insanely fast. After turning Big Mom's stronger officer into a pretzel, Luffy exits the mirror world and goes straight for the hungry, weakened Big Mom while the rest of his crew defends against her children. Now, Luffy still can't use advanced conqueror's hockey at this point, but still, Big Mom was just so weak due to her condition that I think Luffy would definitely keep up and eventually defeat her, shocking everyone. And now there's only one destination left for the Straw Hats, Wano, where they'll need to fight against the world's strongest creature, Kaido. You may be thinking that Wano will be a piece of cake now since they have to worry only about one emperor, but what if I tell you that Big Mom's absence would actually lead to tragedy among the Straw Hats? After thinking Kaido just killed all of his friends, enraged Luffy would fly straight at him with everything he's got. Now while this attack would definitely hurt Kaido this time, most of the damage would be blocked by his scales. The longer the fight goes on, the better it becomes for Kaido because Luffy would start getting pretty tired from all those relentless attacks. In the end, he'd lose the fight and be sent to prison with Kid. But as it turns out, getting sent to prison is a good thing because here he meets Yogoro, who teaches him the key to defeating Kaido, the advanced armament hockey. On the day of the raid, Luffy would spend no time getting to the rooftop to assist the scabbards and they'd just leave the fight to Luffy after seeing how outmatched they are. Luffy would fight evenly against Kaido now that he can pierce his scales with advanced armament hockey. And what's even better is that Kid and Law will soon arrive at the rooftop to help him since, well, Big Mom is defeated, so it's not like they have anything better to do. However, while all this is going on, Usopp, Nami, and Tama are struggling against Page One and Ulti. And as you may remember, the one who saves them is none other than Big Mom. But since she's already defeated now, she isn't here, which means that these three will unfortunately be killed by the Beast Pirates. Luffy, sensing that something bad has happened, would be so mad that he'd go all out, and with the help from his comrades from the Worst Generation, he'd eventually overwhelm Kaido and defeat him. Wano would finally be freed from the Beast Pirates' rule, but the Straw Hats would leave the island without any partying. More the losses of their crewmates. Wow, who would have guessed that Luffy awakening this insanely strong power early on would actually lead to such a bad outcome in the end? But did you ever wonder what would have happened if Kaido arrived at Marineford and clashed with the Marines and Whitebeard? 